What's up, everyone? I was curious to see what a master class from a seasoned musician would be like, so I checked out the master class from Herbie Hancock on jazz. It's entitled Herbie Hancock Teaches Jazz. Imagine that. Not only did I check it out because it's Herbie Hancock, who's been a great piano player, composer, and jazz legend for over 60 years, but also because it's a course on one of my favorite forms of music, which is jazz. And it's also taught from the perspective of, you know, playing the piano. So obviously I'm not gonna be as interested in a course that's taught primarily from a guitar player or a drum player's point of view. Even though I'm sure I could learn something from that too. I'm not incredibly familiar with jazz artists throughout music history, but I do appreciate the art form and the craftsmanship within the genre. First, I just wanna say that I'm not being sponsored to do this review. I have a very small channel that just started, so Nobody's gonna be dumb enough to pay me to give a good review. So everything in this review is exactly how I feel. Now, there are 25 videos in this class, ranging anywhere from like two to 16 minutes, but the majority of the videos are like 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna put up a screenshot of the videos and their labels so you can see the general idea in each video. They also include a PDF where they give you some history of Herbie Hancock, chapter reviews of the videos, assignments to complete, and some sheet music on the concepts that he's playing in the videos. So you're going to have to learn how to read sheet music if you want to follow on the PDF and, and try to play it. If you can't read sheet music yet, then you could always learn it later. I can kind of sort of read sheet music, but I'm not proficient in it. There are some people that could read sheet music, identify the notes, and play it all at the same time, just like you and I could read words in a book or a magazine. Other than being able to play by ear and identify all the notes and chords in a composition, I think that's one of the skills I'd love to have when it comes to music. All throughout the course, I mean, they try to switch up the view in the videos as well. For most of the course, Herbie is at the piano and they change from shots of close-ups on Herbie to side views to overhead views so you can see his fingers and hands move up and down the piano keys. In other videos, Herbie moves to a keyboard while he talks about some concepts and also when he starts his jam sessions with other musicians. I want to give you a short rundown on the first nine videos or so. I mean, don't expect to get deep teaching on music theory in these videos. These first nine videos are more philosophical where Herbie talks about his experiences being a musician, where he started, how he grew up as an artist over the years, improvisation, and how it makes you a better player. And some other basic thoughts, including giving you the name of some piano exercises. It's kind of more inspirational talk and general musings about music in these videos. I'm not gonna lie, these parts weren't that interesting to me for a masterclass, but I still think there's some value there, especially for beginners or someone that's frustrated if they're playing or advancement hasn't taken off like a rocket in the first three minutes of playing the piano. I think we live in the age of instant gratification, but Herbie is easing you into the course in these videos. There's one video where he simply just plays one of the pieces that he's composed in his career, and he wants you to just listen to it. He also does this a couple more times in the course later on as well. Listening to music is one of the best ways to try and understand music, and over time your ear develops, and it helps you in all aspects from your playing to composing and writing your own songs by hearing you know, different dynamics being used, techniques and writing styles. Starting from video 10 is where Herbie starts to get a little bit more into music theory. And he even throws in a couple of jam sessions in the next few videos from there. At least they're both labeled jam sessions. The first jam session was pretty cool, but it was more of a mess around using like weird alien type sounds. That was an actual jam session because they were improvising and improvising is an integral part of jazz. Improvisation is pretty much the standard of jazz music. The next jam session was really cool because Herbie, a bass player and a drummer played an original version of one of his songs called Watermelon Man. Then they played a rearranged version of the same song that another artist had recorded. So technically the second one's not really a jam session, but it still was really enjoyable for me. I know people don't really sign up for master classes just to hear jam sessions, but it was a nice break from the regular format. Videos like this are scattered throughout the class. After this, Herbie starts to get into talking about actually composing music where he talks about just starting. You know, just, you have to start somewhere, so you might as well just start. No matter if you're nervous or you think you can't do it, well, you have to start to see if you can. Just start, and a lot of the time, something in that space where writers access inspiration takes hold, 
and it could be a domino effect where even just one small idea can lead to the next and the next and eventually you have a whole idea that you can flesh out and it becomes a whole song. He shows this process by taking you through a song that he wrote during his career. Once again, the song is called Watermelon Man. So like I said, this is where Herbie starts giving more practical information for actually composing. For me, Video 16 is the type of information that I was most interested in while watching and listening to this course. This is the video where he talks about chord voicings. Chord voicings are what make your composition sound more interesting. Depending on what chord voicings you use, it adds more color to your music. Herbie goes on to talk about how the notes in your bass or your left hand should be different than the root note in the chord you're using while playing the melody in your right hand. It gives it a different sound than just using root notes in the bass. For instance, if you're playing a C chord in your right hand, then don't play a C root note in your left hand unless it's inverted with a third or fifth note as the root and so on. I've written about maybe 15 songs so far and I've done this. So in future songs, I'm making it a note to not do that that much, or at least try not to do it that much. I think I want to actually even go back and change that bad beginner's habit and switch up some of the songs that I've already written. So you don't always just want to play, you know, generic block chords or generic triads in your right hand with the root note in the left hand. The next video that I saw some value in for me is video 19. It's called Expanding Your Harmonic Horizons. Herbie talks about not playing the obvious notes, or as he heard Miles Davis say, don't play the butter notes. I can't believe it's no butter. He explains this as not playing the third and seventh notes in a chord in your right hand melody line. All throughout the course, Herbie gives you personal stories, inspiration, performances, some music theory, and techniques on composing. So I think if you're a beginner to an intermediate player, or student, then you can get a lot of value out of this course. Don't think that you're gonna just come out of the gate and you know start playing and writing like Herbie Hancock. You still have a lot to learn before that happens. You also have a lot to learn before you can even really understand some of the things he's talking about in terms of chord voicings. But you can learn that stuff later and then come back and rewatch Herbie's course. A lot of people see someone like Herbie playing in this video the way he does, and they wanna play like he does. But what they don't see are the thousands of times he played boring scales, or finger techniques inside on a nice day when he probably wanted to go hang out with his friends. Like I said before, Herbie's been perfecting and learning his craft for over 60 years. So it's a long process that takes a lot of practice and reading and learning from others. It's not gonna just come to you by you wishing it. I mean, that's pretty much the same for anything. That's how I started learning about writing songs and playing the piano. I took an active role and got on the internet and started with simple stuff and over time my knowledge started growing. I mean, I'm still no, like I said before, I'm still no Elton John. You also don't have to buy a $2,000 keyboard at first. I mean, if you want a, a more realistic and full piano sound, then yeah, you're gonna have to buy a somewhat higher end keyboard eventually. But at first, just get something on the lower end to learn from and see if you wanna continue it. There's no sense in buying a $2,000 keyboard if after a week, you're just gonna, you know, let it sit there and collect dust. When I first started out, I had a really crappy Casio keyboard. I mean, my last one was like $600 used, and this brand new one that I just got was like $585 with the tax. Unless you're gonna be performing in gigs, then you don't really need an expensive one. I would say I'm probably somewhere in between beginner and intermediate, and I still have a lot to learn. In one of my first videos, my intro video to my channel, I told you all that I wasn't that versed in music theory, but I learn stuff all the time just by watching other artists. I've talked about him in other videos that I've done before a little bit, but Rick Beato is helping me get even further on my progression. So go check out Rick Beato's YouTube channel again because he doesn't just have entertaining videos, he also has music theory videos that you can learn from. I admit I slacked off for a while until I started getting into it again when I started my YouTube channel. I had a Yamaha Portable Grand keyboard and she sadly kicked the bucket after about 12 years or so. I recently got a new Yamaha P71 and I feel like I need to almost start over from scratch in terms of playing. All right, so getting back to conclude the review on this course after I just took a little detour. Even if you're an advanced player or student, you might get a kick out of just hearing Herbie talk about some of his experiences or get some inspiration or joy out of hearing, you know, some of his pieces and watching him play them in the video. I do think that this course is mostly for beginners to intermediate students though. And anyone above intermediate most likely knows all of this information and more already. I know most of this information, but the value of this class, I guess, depends on what perspective you're coming at it from. 
it's not as simple as a rating from one to a 10. There is some good information here, but just like me, you'll value some videos over others. Herbie's teaching style is just as pleasant as his personality seems. He's really easy to listen to, and he's not that stereotypical piano teacher, you know, where he's rapping you on the knuckles with a ruler if you hit the wrong note. To Herbie, there are no wrong notes or mistakes. Like the text in the PDF and Herbie say, I mean, this course is about, you know, you finding your own sound and style. So if you're interested, then take what you can from the Herbie Hancock Masterclass, but then go learn more to be able to expand on the ideas that he's giving you. So I hope my review helped anyone that was thinking about diving into this masterclass. If it helped, then like the video, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you later.